Now this could be a very controversial video and I expect the comments to be absolutely crazy in this. But the reality is someone needs to talk about this and I'm putting my hand up to say, well, I'll give you the reality check of what's actually happening. If you guys are interested in what my thoughts are, then definitely keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, personal development and all things financial freedom. Now I've got to give you the disclaimer up front. I can't give you financial advice. I'm a real estate channel, which means I'm biased towards real estate investing and I run my own buyer's agency, which means you might think that all of this purpose is to market to you to get you to use my service. And there's a small portion of you that watch this channel that actually needs the help. The rest of you that are out there that don't need a buyer's agent or already use a buyer's agent or you're doing it yourself, then you should still stick around because there's a lot of value here that I think you can take away and I hope you do. And if any of you guys actually need the help to accelerate and scale up with someone, we run one of the fastest growing buyers agencies. We're not a team of one or two people. We have a team of almost 50 full-time staff and we're out there helping everyday Australians to purchase real estate to get to financial freedom. With those disclaimers out of the way, let's jump into one of the most controversial videos I'm making on this channel. So affordability is a concern here in Australia and it's probably one of the worst when you consider how much our average income is, how much we're paying per square meter versus the rest of the world. But the real estate market apparently doesn't care about our feelings. And I'll tell you the exact reason why. I'm gonna to present to you the simplified version in one image, and then we're gonna go dive deeper into it. But this here right now is exactly what is happening. What most people think is happening is that the price of property is actually going up and that the dollar value stays consistent. It's the same dollar today is worth the same dollar in 20 years time as it was the same purchasing power 50 years ago. But in reality, this is what's happening. The bottom part of this image is exactly what's happening right now. The price of property isn't actually going up. It's still the same. It's not like these houses are so much better. I would go on to argue that most of the stuff being built now is worse than what it was 20 years ago but it's the second part of this image, which is the dollar losing its value. And this image here should give you an idea of why real estate will continue going up forever, whether you think about it in real terms, whether you think about it in Australian dollar denominated terms, the reality is houses are gonna get more expensive. And one of the tricks that being used in the government right now is instead of having price go up, what we're gonna do is introduce shrinkflation, not only just to your Cadbury chocolates, but also to housing. A classic example of this is when you look at new areas that are being cut up and you look at these lot sizes and they keep getting smaller, smaller and smaller. It used to be that you could go into an area and on average a house would be sitting on sort of 600 to 700 square meters. Now the average is looking closer to about 250 to 350 square meters. Yet the price is still the same. And so when you start breaking down the cost per square meter, it's actually more expensive to get into those properties. But the reason it's being offered is because of affordability. Most people still wanna own their own home. It's the great Australian dream. One that's getting further and further away from reality. And the reason for that is that we have our dollar that we're using to purchase these properties dropping in value every year. We have inflation, which is basically an invisible tax. And what I mean by that is that every year, the RBA, our central bank, aims to get to two or 3% inflation rate. Now, what does that actually mean? A lot of people on the internet go out and say, oh, inflation's high, inflation's low. You might be having conversations around this now, but you might not actually know what this means. If I have $100 today and the inflation is 3%, it means in 12 months time, if I wanna purchase the same $100 worth of goods, it's gonna cost me $103. And so imagine that happening compound every single year for existence. That means every single time that you're thinking you're getting a pay rise, things are going well. Right now, you might be feeling like you're making more money than ever before yet you probably feel more poor than you've ever felt before because asset prices keep going higher and higher and higher. Now, I couldn't find a chart that shows the Australian dollar, but this is exactly what's happening with the Australian dollar, if not at a faster pace. And what you see here is a dollar's worth, which is the purchasing power of the US dollar. Now, the most important part to this is the notes that are in here. The Bretton Woods Agreement establishes the gold standard and the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. This happened in the 1940s. But what ends up happening is that in the early 1970s, the gold standard is abandoned and currencies are no longer linked to gold, which means gold was the reserve and then the dollars that you denominated that came out was backed by how much gold you actually have. You now have a fractional reserve banking system, which basically means if I owe you money or I wanna owe someone else money, I'm gonna print more money. And that's basically what they can do right now. 
which is create money out of thin air. And a classic example of what happened was in 2020 when we had the lockdowns and the pandemic. The reason why real estate has just absolutely pumped over the last couple of years is not because everyone just wants a house now. Now there is some truth to that, the fact that we have demand with migrants coming into the country and population increasing. But the reality is it's because so much money came into the system, the purchasing power of that dollar diminished. And that meant that everything that's denominated in that dollar has now just increased by 20%. And the US money supply grew by 3.8 trillion in 2020, which equals 20% of all dollars ever created. And that was in 2020. 21, 22, 23, a lot more of that stuff was happening. And that's why prices for property kept increasing. It's the same thing that happened here in Australia. Now, what's interesting is that we always argue about how real estate is so unaffordable, it can't keep going up forever. But we have data that in this chart, although says from 1970, you can look back over the last 150 years in Australia and you'll still see a similar chart to this, which is that these all these lines are following each other and they all go up towards the right. And if you consider the fact that we've had low inflation, high inflation, low interest rates, high interest rates, we had banking changes, we had the mortgage cliff, we had the pandemic, we had world wars, we had potential world wars, geopolitical issues, and yet this graph does one thing, which is up to the right. And that is why it's so important to understand that if you're someone that's sitting on the sidelines saying, well, oh, I think this might happen, this might happen, this might happen, I can tell you now, for someone who understands real estate and does this day in, day out, I know that if someone told me 11 years ago, Ravi, over the next 11 years, we're gonna see this, 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 this happen, do you still wanna invest? I would have said, hell no, I'm not touching real estate at all. In fact, I'm probably gonna just save my money, buy some gold and be a doomsday prepper because all of that sounds pretty scary. And that's the thing, fear. It's the fear that holds us back. People who are willing to take on the risk are doing really, really well. And not just in the short term, but in the longer term because their strategy is aligned to the long term. Now, another key reason as to why real estate continues going higher is something called replacement cost. Now, here is the overview of building construction output prices. Following the initial shock of the pandemic, prices received by building construction businesses have increased by 31% from September quarter 2020 to the June quarter in 2024. Driven by growth in house construction prices, which rose by 40.8% over this period. Prices received for other residential building construction, 25.3%, and non-residential building construction, 27.1%, also strongly contributed to the rise. And what you can see here is the exact same thing, up and to the right. What's really accelerated this is the application for the Federal Home Builder Grant, which is what I was talking about on this channel a few years ago. When this grant came out, I said, look, I don't think this is gonna help the situation. What we're gonna see is prices continue going higher. Although on the front end, it was like, hey, the government's trying to help us here. We just saw all those costs flow onto the people and now we see prices much, much higher. Now this is very macro. When you think about this, you're understanding the cost of building a property keeps increasing. We have the rich getting richer. We have the middle class absolutely collapsing and the people that can't get into the market find themselves going backwards every single year because our dollar that we're all working towards earning is losing its value. So how does this system seem fair? It's not. And that's exactly why I make these videos so that I can reach as many of you out there to say, hey, it's time to get serious because the rule of the game is against us. We're always at the loss. It's like entering the casino and I just went to Vegas. So if you want to check out that vlog, you should definitely go and check out the vlog channel that I've got, which is a behind the scenes of my life, growing a business and trying to help as many people achieve financial freedom. But when you go there, you're almost expecting that you're going to lose. The casino or the house always wins. I saw it even for the people around me. They were making good money and somehow after about an hour, they lost everything. The house and the casinos get bigger and bigger. They renovate these nice resorts because they have the money. Where do they make the money? From people like you and I. The rules of the game are against us. And that is why you need to do the opposite of what average people around you are doing. This won't change with or without me. If tomorrow I decided not to upload another video, delete my channel, guess what? Property prices will continue up and to the right. And why? Because the purchasing power of our Australian dollar is going down towards the right. So as long as that continues, you're gonna find yourself going backwards if you aren't investing your money. So I know affordability is a concern. I know it affects most people and it's gonna affect more and more people every single year. I wanna know what your thoughts are. Let's start that discussion and be kind to everyone because I know this is a very controversial topic. 
So let me know what your thoughts are. If there's anything that I've missed, I'm sure you guys are gonna let me know, but let's start that conversation and be productive about it because we want this community to grow. It's not about you against someone else watching, it's how do we help each other get further ahead. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you think this video brings you value, I have hundreds of others on this channel, so definitely consider subscribing. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.